Hey guys, what is up? It has been Pager here once again with another video on Arrow Season 6, our last video on Arrow Season 6. And this is our review for episode 23 of this season, otherwise known as a finale, otherwise entitled Life Sentence. But of course, obviously, don't continue on with the video if you have not watched the episode. Spoilers, we're going to be talking spoilers, some big stuff happened. Uh, yeah, decent amount of big stuff. So uh, yeah, don't watch it if you haven't watched the episode, go do that, then come back. But if you are continuing on, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below your favorite part of this episode, your general thoughts, what do you think of it? Yeah, just leave all that downstairs in the comments. Uh, of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like, especially it's the last video for Arrow Season 6. I think this warrants dropping a like, so it'd be awesome if you could do that to show your support. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. So last episode was essentially a big setup for this episode. So just all set up for, uh, for the finale. So just laying everything out, putting people in certain positions and just setting everything up. The main thing to talk about from last episode again to this one was Laurel getting caught or Black Star and getting caught by Ricardo Diaz after just eventually completely going against him. And uh, maybe, you know, him outsmarting Laurel a bit. And then obviously Oliver meeting up with Samantha Watson, the FBI agent, and working out a deal. The second part we didn't hear last episode, but if you knew some stuff that was happening in this finale, you sort of got a gist of what that second uh, agree uh, agreement with her would have been. But quickly, I just do want to thank you all for uh, watching Arrow this season with me, whether you've watched every single one of my videos, whether they're bonus videos, the reviews, or the trailer breakdowns. If you watch all of them, awesome. If you just watch a couple of them, then that's great as well. But if you just watch one every now and then, that's just awesome for you supporting the channel and the Arrow videos. And I can't wait to do it next season. And uh, yeah, continue it all. Yeah, so just thanks to everyone that supported Arrow throughout the season. It's greatly appreciated. But really, this episode started with what you would expect with Arrow, a typical Arrow fight sequence. But it wasn't typical, actually. It was just an awesome, I really like this opening fight sequence. Even though you could argue it didn't really lead to anything, it was just uh, the FBI and uh, Team Arrow getting a crackdown and taking over SCPD. But it was a cool fight sequence, and it allowed our heroes to know that, well, Diaz is not in these two locations. Uh, so where the hell is he? Now we do have the longbow hunters introduced in this episode. Now we don't see them, which I was sort of disappointed in. I thought we're going to see them at some point and it's going to lead on to next season. We don't see them, which I thought was a bit disappointing, but they have confirmed. I think Mark Guggenheim, the executive producer for this season, who won't be on next season, but he did confirm that their name dropped in this episode because they're going to be showing up next season in season seven. So... I'll probably do a video, bonus video, in regards to going over the Longbow Hunters and which ones we could see show up in next season. But yeah, that name dropped in Anatoly does tell Team Arrow about the Longbow Hunters. So it isn't some mysterious thing, which only uh, Ricardo mentions and stuff like that. Team Arrow knows about these Longbow Hunters and they're a myth in this unit, in the, in this, uh, in the Arrowverse. You know, they're a myth. Last one, I think, said they died in the 1950s or 60s. And they're even a group that the League of Assassins are sort of uh, a bit wary of. So... I'm excited to see them next season. A bit disappointed we didn't see them at the end of this, uh, in this episode, but I guess they would have had to cast people and it would have seemed like a bit of a waste to do it in this episode. So maybe just save it for next season. I guess that's a smart move. Now, the first assault on Diaz in this episode didn't really go to plan because it wasn't really an assault on Diaz. It was an assault on, well, a bunch of explosives. And uh, the way it was tricked out, uh, like uh, set up with all the tripwires and stuff was pretty cool. Like visually, I thought it was pretty cool. But this whole scene led on to... Renee having that call with Zoe. At that point, I was like, they could kill Renee off here. I, I wasn't too aware if they were ever going to do that or not. Um, I think it was just really, once again, to set up some stuff, you know, back and forth between Oliver later on. You could argue maybe it's a wasted moment and a bit of a, like a bait and switch, but yeah, I didn't mind it. You know, it, I think it's just, they're just trying to share like Renee's character growth, but also how important his daughter is. We have seen that at multiple points this season. His daughter is really his rock. Like, if his daughter was gone, Renee would probably, you know, probably be completely lost. So I think that's just them just uh, pushing that, uh, that point forward even more. Now, Oliver and Quentin Lance's initial talk outside the SCPD was once again one of those, like, is this their last talk? Is this the last talk that Oliver and Quentin are going to have in the entirety of Arrow? Is this the last talk they're going to ever have? And... I thought that was going to be the case until like they start talking about the pacemaker and stuff and they later come back to it that Quinton was doing that so they could actually use the pacemaker as a tracker. So Quinton was thinking ahead, good forward thinking by our good old mate Quinton Lance. 
But as I said throughout this season, I really do love it when it's just an Oliver and Quentin talk because I think if you're going to look at a relationship on the show, just two people and how they've, you know, bounced off each other from the beginning to the point we're at now, Oliver and Quentin have probably had the biggest change. Because remember when we came back from season one or when we came, when Oliver came back from the island in season one and that initial conflict between Oliver and Quentin, not pretty at all, pretty messy one. But that is a completely contrasting, like the complete opposites, that conversation with the one we had in this episode. And I thought that was great. And yeah, as I've always said throughout the seasons, uh, I do love Oliver and Quentin's talks. But I must say, I was actually pretty surprised at how quick Diaz was like, screw this, I feel like, you know, pulling the trigger. And he just shoots Quentin straight up. And I thought, okay, that happened really quick. Was I the only one that thought that happened really quickly? You could argue, yeah, it happened quick, but it's more realistic, I think. Like really, like a person with Diaz and his temperament, we know he's got a bit, uh, pretty short, tri uh, you know, Pretty short temper. Uh, so I guess it was, it was lining up with his character. If Diaz was to sit back and not do anything and then just eventually shoot Quentin just before those people, uh, Team Arrow came, like literally one second before they blast in, it, would, it wouldn't have fit the character of Diaz. So him just shooting Quentin up straight away because of what Quentin had done and stuff, I think fit, you know, what had been set up with Diaz throughout this season. But speaking of Diaz, that fight on the roof with Green Arrow, I love that. I thought it was awesome. You could easily tell it was a Diaz stunt double. Like, you could tell straight away, like, even with the dark and shadows, it just didn't look like Kirk Acevedo, like, the, the stockiness and, like, the build and stuff. I think uh, Kirk's a bit a bit of a better build. Um, but, yeah, you could tell it was a stunt double, but regardless of that, the choreography I thought was really cool in that fight. Um, because I think one thing that a lot of people were sort of disappointed with was maybe they didn't focus too much on the martial arts skills of Ricardo Diaz. They just sort of just said, yeah, he's good at it. And they showed like a couple of things with him fighting, you know, against some other random people and then him against Diggle and him against Oliver at one other stage as well. So people were sort of annoyed that they didn't maybe flesh that out more. But I think if they showed too much of it, then it wouldn't have made, it would have got boring moving into next season because we know Ricardo Diaz is still going to be a thing next season. So uh, this fight was good because it just showed the level that Diaz is at, where essentially... He didn't beat Oliver. Oliver obviously beat him and stabbed him and stuff like that. But it shows that Diaz is almost on that level. Um, so I thought that was a good thing that they did uh, in this finale. It showed an epic fight between them that didn't end in one of them really losing or winning. But that moment where Lowell just came in and went, look, you're not going to kill him. Just just move aside, please. Uh, I'm going to scream at him. And just blew him off the building. I thought he was dead at that moment because my whole theory was that Diaz was going to continue on into next season anyway. Uh, and I've been saying that for a, a while now because of how late he was introduced in this season. I thought it, it makes sense that they just saved him for next season, especially with the quadrant and stuff. But when he started flipping, I couldn't tell that was water because it was really dark. And then I heard, and then you could see like the splash. I was like, oh, thank God that's water. So he's easily survived that. Arguably, if the water was maybe, I think they were too, they weren't high enough for that water to be any really that lethal. So yeah, Diaz really didn't. He might have got a, a bit of a, a belly flop or a bit of a bit of a splash back on his back and maybe a red mark or something, but uh, I don't think you would have felt too much from that fall. But then we get to the follow-on from Quinton getting shot, and we obviously have the Oliver and Quinton talk in hospital, and this was really sad. This mirrored the Oliver and Laurel talk, and I think that's what they were going for, like similar situations and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, once again, as I've said in this video earlier on, the Oliver and Quinton talks are always some of my favourite moments on Arrow, even if it's a shit episode, a shit season or a great episode in the greatest season. Regardless, usually the Oliver and Quinton talks are really good because it is like a father and a son talking to each other and having that close bond. And that's, you know, that's basically what Oliver was saying uh, throughout his talk to Quinton. So that was a really nice moment. And for that to be Quinton's last scene, Paul Blackthorne's last scene, I thought was great. It was similar to when Katie Cassidy passed. Oh, not Katie Cassidy, when Laurel Lance passed in the show and that was Katie Cassidy's like last scene before she came back. Well, like Earth One Laurel's last scene, I guess, in present day. I thought that was really nice. But man, did anyone just like go, oh, when Sarah came in? Because you just knew that nothing good was going to happen after that. But that was Sarah and Laurel's first encounter that we've seen. Obviously, Laurel had contacted her, but this was the first time that they've met and probably like face to face and stuff. Will we see that more? Well, we don't see Sarah leave. Obviously, she's going to go back to the Wave Rider with the Legends. But I'm hoping we get some more, maybe maybe development between them two. That would be nice to see. Probably in the crossover, you'd have to think, next season. But this was a major episode for Laurel and just her becoming a hero. Even that when uh, 
Diaz was holding the gun up to Quinton and Laurel was telling Quinton like not to, you know, do anything and stuff like that. That's a heroic moment and stand because, you know, one, either, either one of them could have got shot at that moment. So you can see Laurel or the or Black Siren slowly turning into a hero. I can't wait to see what happens with her going on into next season, especially because Diaz is still alive and she's definitely going to have that, well, revenge. Uh, you know, she wants to get revenge and stuff like that and is, stu is still pretty annoyed about what's happened this season. So yeah, I'm interested to see what happens there. But I must say, the double whammy of the season would have to be when Oliver was officially arrested by the FBI and then the doctor comes out and tells them that Quinton had died uh, to a seizure. Similar to, I think Laurel died to an embolism, I think it was. But, you know, similar to like something where they couldn't bring it back through surgery and stuff like that. So, double whammy. Now, was I the only one thinking when those people came in to take Quinton to the operating room, I was thinking... Would Diaz have people in the hospital that are under his control? Just in case if someone came in, he wanted them to actually die. Would there be someone in the hospital that could possibly, you know, be under his wing? Because that was one of my first thoughts. Is like, what if Quinton comes in, he goes to the operating room, and one of the people in there is under Diaz's pay books or any, under his paychecks and stuff like that, and could just kill him? I was actually thinking that. I, I don't think that's what's happened. I think he's just actually just died of a seizure. Fairly lazy off screen, but, you know, that happens sometimes. But, I don't know, it would be pretty interesting next season if they do find out that someone in the hospital had actually killed Quentin Lance while in surgery. Because he wasn't like, you know, they, they said he was going to be okay. So, I don't know. Let me know if you would go with that theory or you just think he just died of a your general seizure um, while on the operating table. Just let me know in the comments. But, of course, as people were wondering if this was going to happen and eventually did, we got our famous Oliver doing the uh, I am Green Arrow moment or the Tony Stark I am Iron Man moment or he said I am the Green Arrow. We thought this was going to happen eventually and it's not surprising that happened in this finale right at the end to lead into season 7. Bit of a, you know, a uh, bit of a full stop on this season. But the thing that is pretty massive is I know that like the human target came in as Tommy Merlin in the courtroom and, you know, sort of got Oliver off that charge beforehand. I guess the main thing is that Oliver admitted this, but also said about Roy Harper not being the Green Arrow, which sort of allows Roy just to come back into Star City and go, Hi, I'm here. I'm not Green Arrow, by the way. That was Oliver Queen. You know, we know he's coming back next season. Roy Harper is going to be a season regular. So I wonder if that's his pathway, just to come back to Star City. I don't know. They've still got to work out like how Thea can't come back into the show, but Roy can. That's going to be a bit confusing, but that might be a reason that why Roy comes back, because he's not really seen as a criminal anymore. And obviously the last couple of scenes of this episode are Oliver getting locked up. Now, I don't think they actually say the prison. I think on the back you can see some writing. I didn't get a good look at it, but this is meant to be slab side uh, penitentiary, so a supermax. Um, so, the, but I'm interested to see what they do going on into next season. Like, how do the first couple of episodes of Arrow start? Because as we know, usually Arrow picks up and all the CW shows, all the DC shows pick up around like four to six months, I think it is roughly after um, the other seasons end. So the previous day when, you know, this season ends will be four to six months in the future when we pick up again. So Oliver's going to have a different look. I think we all know Oliver's going to have a different look, whether it's, you know, the classic Green Arrow look from the comics with a goatee, bit of longer hair and stuff like that. Interested to see how that looks. I think it'd be pretty awesome. But I'm also interested to see the opening couple of episodes and how Oliver gets out because we know he's going to get out of prison, but in what way does he get out? Who helps him? Uh, is he let out, you know, through brute force or does someone come in and do it? We'll have to wait and see. I'm interested to see how that goes. But as I've been saying throughout the video, uh, Diaz is still alive and kicking. Uh, he's going to come back with a vengeance. And, but he should look out because there's someone else with a vengeance. And it's her initials are BS, but she's not bullshit. It's Black Siren. So he's got to watch his back and she's not going to be happy. And also you've got a former League of Assassins member who I'm sure isn't happy either in the form of uh, Sarah Lance. So... Yeah, Diaz better watch his back. Uh, but I'm interested to see what they do next season with the Longbow Hunters, the Quadrant, Diaz, carrying on for next season. I've liked how they've done this. They haven't done the cliche, oh, it's a one season villain. It's carried on. Uh, and he's, he's, this character is going to basically have like almost like a two season story, which I think is really cool. But overall, I really enjoyed this finale. Was it the best finale of Arrow ever? No, but the thing is, it wasn't. It was a finale, but also like a setup as well for next season with Diaz. He didn't die, so he didn't get a, 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 a like a, a full stop on Diaz's story. It's going to continue. And I actually like what Arrow's doing this season, moving into next season. I, thought, I think it's like a really 
yeah, it's a good play. It's a good play in my opinion. I can't wait to see what they do. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed the finale. I like what they did. And I can't, it's left me on the edge of my seat going, what are they going to do next season? Who are we going to meet? And all of that. I can't wait. And um, yeah, that's basically all I can say. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this episode, on the finale, on this season. What do you think of it? What do you think of the finale? What do you think of the season as a whole? Are you looking forward to what they're going to do next season with Ricardo Diaz continuing his story, Longbow Hunters coming in, some Quadrant stuff, and they might do Ninth Circle instead of Quadrant, we'll have to wait. Uh, Black Siren, Roy Harper. Leave all those opinions in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.